and it's timesheet list specific for the user that logs in, obviously. So at this point, you guys know how does the logging work, right? You know about session. You know how you can identify somebody if it's login or not, and how to present data specific for that user. We're going to redo it all over again. Now login is going to be Ajax style. So at this point, what do we have? We have a page called sign in, login, whatever. It's a PHP that posts onto itself. You ask for username and password. You submit a button that has a form. The form posts onto itself. You send username and password. You detect that it's being posted. So you make a database connection. You make a query whether that user exists or not. If everything goes well, you create a session with the user information, the employee or whatever. If it doesn't go well, you just display an error message. Well, guess what? Now we're going to be able to do it with Ajax. So, can you guys remind me what Ajax means? That's right. Asynchronous JavaScript. Which means which means that I'm not going to be able to do login page anymore. I'm going to have to put all my login stuff in my home page index. Also, that means that I'm not going to do a whole trip of posting stuff to the web server and then the web server comes back and replies with a new page. No, I'm not going to be able to do that. Okay? What I'm going to have to do is, behind the scenes, within the same page, I'm going to have to do an asynchronous JavaScript call. And you guys remember, back in week 7, I explained what Ajax was. And we're going to review it very quickly. This is an HTML page. This HTML page has a whole bunch of radio buttons. When you select on the .NET books, it will show you the images of the .NET books. If you click on the Java C, C++ books, it will show you the images of those books. And you never move from that page. Ever. So how was this accomplished? If you guys remember, every time that you selected a radio button, a JavaScript function get called on the onClick property, that JavaScript function was get images and you will pass an XML file, right? Well, this is get images. And basically, if you guys remember, we use a very powerful object. It's an object that it's available for you on any browser. Okay? It's called the XML HTTP request object. And you create an instance of it. And that's the guy that silently will take the request to the server, keep doing its own things. Don't wait for the, res the response. You can still we be working on your page. And in a synchronous way, it will get notified, hey, I'm done with your request. Here's the, resp the response. And it will grab that response and do something with it on the page without leaving the page. Okay? And we also um, included... Well, in this case, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So it's uh, it's an HTML page, and I'm just going to review it very quickly. This is wh way back from week seven. Week seven, and this is pull images onto the page. 
So this is the radio. These are the radio buttons that I was talking about. So you click on the Java. Notice that we are in pull images onto page.html, right? When you click on the Java C++, you get a whole bunch of images, and you have never left the page. And you did not go to that page again. In fact, if you refresh the page, all the images will be gone. Okay, so now if you click on all books, there you go. That's an Ajax query to the server asking for the images of all those books and you display them. So now, let's put our heads back into login. If this was login, you will have a box for username, a box for password, and a button for login or submit or whatever. The idea is that the unsubmit of that button, on the unclick of that button, okay, you will have a form, but you're not going to post that form to anywhere. As a matter of fact, what you're going to say is you're going to say, JavaScript, please take care of this request. And the JavaScript will use the XML HTTP request and do the query to the server without you leaving the login page. Okay? So let's go very quickly through the changes. Okay, so now let's go back to, before I do the go through the changes, let's go back to how logging the old style was working. So I'm going to go in here, and when I click on login, Notice that I'm being sent to sign in. No, this. When I click on login, notice that I'm being sent to sign in PHP, brand new page. This is where you would put Mike Dover's social security number, password. You click on signing. It posts unto itself. When it posts unto itself, it says, yes, you're the right rightful owner. Now I'm going to send you to timesheet list, right? And then now I'm in another page, timesheet list. But all the time it posts unto itself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put together home page and login. Okay? This is home this is login. This is home page, and this is login. So I'm going to put it all together. Now, I was thinking, where would be the best place to put that login so I can still show my, my, my home page? And I decided to put it right over here in this section. Because login should not take that much space. It's just two boxes and a button, right? And it should be very straightforward what you have to do. So that's exactly what I did. So I'm going to go through the actual code and I'm going to show you guys the changes that I made. So basically, I'm going to keep my index. My index HTML is my home page. Okay? I'm not going to do anything with it. In fact, this page will disappear. Okay? I'm going to leave my home page as sign in which is going to have almost the same look and feel as home page. So this is the old sign-in and this is the new sign-in. So notice that I have the exact same code except, except that now, you guys remember I had a form in here. I had a form in the old login and that form had to post where unto itself, right? What was it posting? It was posting username, right? It was posting password, and he had a 
an input button type submit, right? Which is the one that, that triggered the whole login. Okay? So you guys remember that one from last week. We did it last week. Okay. So now <coughs> I need to do the same thing. Except that now I need the extra stuff that was on homepage. What was the extra stuff that was on homepage that was not in, in login? Welcome to Timex, the manager section, remember the manager section, and the hourly employee section. Right? So that I included in here. But notice that I got rid of the boxes. Why? Because the boxes are no longer in here. They're going to be in here. And you guys remember what this we call this section? The header. That was the part that gets that's the part that gets included in every single PHP page. Okay? That's where I'm going to move my login. Does that mean that I can log in from every page? In theory. But what you're going to do is you're going to have some pages that you require to be logged in to see, to watch, like timesheet list, right? And there's other ones that you won't have to be logged in. So the header is going to control that. If you are not logged in and you are in a page that you're rightful to see, you're going to be displayed here, the box username and password, and you're going to be able to log in. If you already log in, does it make sense to display the username and password so you log in again? No. So instead of that, you're going to be replacing that with a welcome or so-and-so user is logged in. If you're not this user, click here to log out, whatever. It all depends on your specific needs of your website. Okay? So it's okay to have the login in the header section. All right. So as far as the signing, pretty much all we did was got rid of the boxes and added stuff that was in home page. That's it. That's all we've done. <coughs> so let's take a look at the header then. What changes have we done to the header? The header before, it was very simple. It was the headers, tag, some made of tags, the links to our JavaScripts and the links to our skinning style sheets. But now we have added that JavaScript that uses the XML HTTPL request. Remember that guy? This is the guy that are under a function with a certain name will do the asynchronous request to the server for us. Okay? And we're going to go through that in a little bit, how that's done. But that's basically the major change in the header. Now, in the menus, this is the header. Inside the header, we have the logo, this section. Then we have, what do we have? This, this div, which contains the menus, our unordered list. Remember, JavaScript drop, drop drawn menus? This guy? Well, then, inside this div, this complete div, I'm going to have to add underneath my menus just about here, the one form that allows me to log in, the form that I cut from the sign-in PHP page. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in the menus. So if you guys take a look at the menus, notice that the menus is the same on order list, JavaScript, drop down, drop, drop down menu, right? But then I have added this div, and I'm going to name it because this div is going to have a certain style. 
that it's going to have to be moved, certain height, all that stuff, so it fits in there, right? So I'm I'm naming it logging Ajax, okay? And I got rid of a whole bunch of uh, extra wording and stuff that I had in 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 the logging page that was just filler, okay? And just pretty much kept the form. That's all I kept. A form that will contain the username, the password, and the submit button. Okay? Now notice that the form was a post to sign in PHP. That's what made us go all the way to the server, post the username and password, do the thing in the server side, and come back with an answer. Right? So are we going to do a post now? No, because it's going to be Ajax style. And we're going to see what that means. So there's no post, and obviously there's no action. All will be taken care of by the on-click of our button. The on-click of our button is going to say, wait a minute, I need to execute something locally on the browser because I have here a call that when I get clicked, I should run login user, and that's a JavaScript function. Login user is the guy that I was talking about in the header. So now let's dig in into this guy. Login user will create the HTTP request, right? <coughs> so basically in this if, you're taking care of the new browsers versus the old browsers. Old browsers like IE5 and IE6, they use ActiveX controls to be able to do AJAX calls, okay? Nowadays, if IE7, Firefox, Chrome, Opera, all the other ones, they use an object, a window object. They don't need ActiveX controls. Okay? So basically, if the window knows about an H XML HTTP request, you're in a good modern browser. And all you're going to do is you're going to create an instance of that object. And we're going to call it the XML HTTP. Okay? And then what are we going to do? Remember the unready state change? That's the attribute that allows us to pass a whole piece of code, JavaScript code, that says when you are ready, I want you to execute this function. Unready state change. Execute this function. And what is that function that we wanted to execute? Well, first of all, we're going to make sure that our ready state is 4, right? And that our status is 200. That means there was a successful query to the server. And yes, I'm ready with the answer. I mean, ready state 4. And if that's the case, what am I going to do? I'm going to go into the document where I'm at. And I'm going to get an element called login div. And I'm going to pretty much take the whole response from the server, that's the XML HTTP re response text, and I'm going to put it as an HTML inside that tag. So if you successfully log in, what do you think is going to be the response? Welcome so-and-so. Or if you're not so-and-so, please log out, whatever. It's a successful login, right? What do you think the response is going to be if the login was not successful? Yes, some kind of error message saying your username or password didn't match. And remember, you're taking this entire div and replacing it with the inner, the inner HTML of that div. You're replacing it completely with the answer. So if somebody just logged in and couldn't log in successfully, 
if you don't provide that box, those two boxes and the button again, they're not going to be able to try again. So the response should also include that little form. Remember that little form? With the because that's what it's going to get replaced if there is a successful login. Remember, it doesn't make sense to have a, the two boxes, username and password, and the button login when you're already logged in. So they have to be replaced. What are they going to be replaced by? Welcome so-and-so, etc. All right. So that's it every, if everything went okay, right? And then you can tell the window to go to a specific, in this case, we're not going to go to index. We're going to go to timesheet list. Yes, so we're going to tell the window to go to timesheet list. But right now it's common and we want to be able to test it first. So, but all the pages are going to have the Ajax login because it's part of the header of the menu. Okay. So your question is, can I just stay in the same page where I'm at after logging? And the answer is yes. In fact, that's what it's doing right now because window location is being commented out. That's what the front slash front slash means. Yeah, if you don't tell the window to go to a specific location, it's going to stay where it's at. So what's going to be the only change that you're going to see? Because you got to change something, otherwise the user is going to say, did I log in or not? Right? whether you welcome the, per the person, the user, or whether you say no, the username and password is wrong, and here's again, try it again. That's what. Okay, so that's what it's important. That you give some feedback to the user whether the login was successful or not. But yes, you can stay in the same page. In fact, if you think about it, that's in essence the idea of Ajax that you don't have to be jumping around different pages, right? From the one page, you can do all kinds of neat stuff re er, and, and requests to the, to the web server, and you never left the page. You're right there. Okay? But, but how is the logging done then? We still haven't figured out how is the logging done. We know how to do logging now, right? But we don't know how to do it the Ajax way. Well, if you guys remember, we had a page called Sign In. Last week we created that one, right? And that one had the header and the menus and all that. And as soon as the co content started, what was the first thing that we did? we put a whole bunch of PHP code. In fact, all this PHP code. Before we welcome anybody and ask uh, for the uh, for the signing and stuff, well, this is the modified version. But all this code, we created. And remind me what this code does. It checks whether somebody's already logged in from the session. Remember? What else? If it's not, if not, nobody is logged in, what does it do? It checks whether somebody tried to log in. That's the post submitted, remember? What's the name of the button? Submitted. So if in the post, you find that submitted is being set, that means somebody tried to log in. And what if that is not true? This is the end of the else, of the if and that else. So what else will you do? You just provide an empty form, right? So when nobody is logged in, and the button submitted is not being pushed, that means you're coming to the page fresh. You're going to be displayed with an empty username box, an empty password, and a submit and a login submit button. Now let's say somebody tried to log in. 
Did somebody log in? Nope. Okay. Did somebody try to log in? Yes. That's when we connect to the database, right? We validate the stuff. This is server-side validation, which we already discussed, and we al you guys already know how to do that, right? And if there's no errors on that validation, what are you going to do? You're going to query the database. You're going to find out if there's a person, employee, user, whatever, in the database with that username and the SHA of that password, correct? If indeed you found a match, then you're going to save that record, the entire employee, user, whatever, person information in the session. So you know at this point their ID, their name, their social security number, their whatever, whatever, whatever that you have as part of your employee, right? And then at that point, you can send me to whatever page you decide to send me, right? Well, I don't know about you, but that sounds like it's the same stuff that I'm going to have to do, whether I do it Ajax or not. I'm going to have to connect to the database. I'm going to have to be able to determine if there's a person with that username and password and all that stuff. But I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it in a page that is going to return a header and menus and, 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 and a sidebar and a footer. You know what I mean? So how about if I just take the code, the code, just the code, okay, and put it in a page called Ajax Login PHP. And if you look at it, it's, it's the same MySQL connection, it's the same, you know, configuration stuff, it's the same uh, server-side validation, all that stuff is the same. Okay? But, but, you're going to be posting two elements to this page. You're going to be posting the username and the password. Right? Remember, those were the two elements that you were posting from the sign-in PHP page. So you have to do the same thing for this guy. Okay? So in, a, in, a few, in a few minutes later, wh why? And then the rest of the stuff is the same. You're going to do a select query against the database. You're going to find out if that's a, a match or not. Okay? But then what's going to be different? So I have my home page. It has a form that runs a JavaScript that makes a call to the server. And then I'm not going to move from this page. What am I expecting back? Am I expecting back a header, a menu, uh, uh, a footer, all that stuff? Or am I just expecting back that little piece of information that I have to put in replacement of the form? Yes, that little piece. And that little piece, it's going to be returned as echoes. Remember echo in PHP? That's our printout. You're going to echo a paragraph that says, logged in or welcome so-and-so. That's it. That's all you're going to be rep uh, re replying or responding wi with. That's if there's a successful login. What if there's no successful login? Then some kind of error message, right? Either the email address or password, whatever, whatever. Plus, plus the form. You got to reply back the form. Cuz if you don't reply back the form, your login form, the username, password boxes and the button will get replaced with an error message and the user is going to be like, "Now what? How am I going to try to log in again?" <coughs> All right. So our menus We'll have the form. 
with the username box, the password box, and the submit button. It will not post to anything, but the button will make sure the login user JavaScript function gets executed. Our header has the login user JavaScript function. That guy will open a connection to the server, and it's going to do a get. It's going to do a get of what? It's going to do a get of ajaxlogin.php, and it's going to pass two parameters. The first parameter is going to be you for username, and where is he going to get the value from? From the document itself. In fact, the document has an element called username. I just showed you the box. And it's going to pass another parameter called P for password. And the value is going to be what? Taken from the document as well, from the password. Okay? So the XML HTTP request is going to do this request to the server. It's going to send it, and it's going to keep working on whatever it has to work on locally on the page. When the server replies back, okay, it's going to execute this function right here. And that's when you actually analyze whether it's in the right state and you got the right response. We don't want any 302s, 404s, 500s. That's bad. We want a 200. So, so, the Ajax login is going to be a PHP page that the only thing its mission is to grab the same code that we had in sign in page which is validation of the user and echo back either a welcome or you got the wrong password and username okay but you're going to do exactly the same stuff that you used to do on the sign in page right except that notice notice that we got rid of our arrays of errors why? Why did we get rid of our arrays of errors? What was the whole purpose of having the arrays of errors? Yes, exactly. If 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 the password was missing, if the username was missing, if it if it didn't match at all, right? And you will display your username is incorrect, your password is incorrect, your login doesn't match, whatever. All the errors, one by one, in the same page. Well, right now, we only count with this much real estate. This little piece of real estate, okay? I'm not going to be able to put all those bunch of errors in that p little piece of real estate, okay? So i got to be very short and specific on the errors. So, for instance, if the username is not valid or whatever. You say you forgot to enter your email address or I should say your employee ID. Right? What else? So now I'm going to have to explain it tonight. What about the password? If the, when you validate the password is not correct, you say you forgot to enter your password. And then you do the same thing. You reply with a registration or a forgot password anchors. Okay? But what if the username and the password were okay? They're, they're, they, they're not missing. They're, they don't have any SQL injections, right? They're fine. So if everything is okay, then that's when you're going to do the famous select statement, right? Right? Except that username is you, and this one is password. Got it? And then that's when you're going to do execute the query 
against this database connection, this query, and if it goes well, you will get the one match, right? If it doesn't go well, what are you going to do? You're going to trigger an error, and this will be sent back to the user. If it went okay, then we should say, you know, the number of rows should be equal to one. That's when we're going to start the session. We're going to say pretty much the same stuff that we did in signing PHP. We're going to save the, res the, the employee that came back in the session. We're going to free the memory. And then we're, that's when we're going to say, hey, logged in as, and you're going to say, who am I logged in as? Okay? going to rephrase it. When you do a query to the database, and I believe the query you're talking about is a select statement, not an insert. Okay. You're going to get back, when, when, when you log in, you should get back one, obviously, and you understand why, because there should be only one user with that username in the database. And by the way, we still have not changed registration to guarantee that, so we're going to have to do that later on. Okay. Let's go back to signing. See this? The result set, which you know at this point should only be one and only one employee. Even though it's only one and one employee, you still want to fetch it as an array. And that's what you save in the session, Tim. You save an array. You do not, you do not want to save R, okay? You want to save the fetch of an array from R. So you're actually saving in the session an array. Don't save R because that's that's not going to help. R is a result set. It's a tif it's a different object in its own on its own. Okay. Exactly. So where is this session? Where is this name coming from? It's coming from the ar from the array, right? From the array that came from the result set. So now session I can call it sub name, and it will give me the name of the person that is logged in. What else? ID. What else? Log out. I mean, I can echo a whole bunch of stuff. Right? And, and, and look at this. Some of you ask me, but, but how am I going to be able to provide certain links or certain uh, 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 content depending on the role of my user? Well, right there. Right there is the answer. You know who's logging. You know what's the role of that person that is logging. If the user level, role, type, whatever you want to call it, it's up to you what you're going to call it. If it's of a certain type, then you're going to echo an anchor that allows that person to do other stuff that otherwise other person wouldn't be able to. In this case, a user level 2 is an admin. So an admin has the ability to do that. Okay? And, and, this is something that I haven't done yet, but eventually I'm going to be doing. Even the menus. The menus that you see, the, dro the JavaScript drop-down drop menus that I have created, they will dynamically be constructed based on who is logged in. So menus will have to ask, is somebody logged in? The answer is yes. Oh, okay, let me see what's the user type, user level, or, 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 or role. And depending on that, I'm going to be able to display certain administrative menus or not. And then you can just make sure that you close the connection, please. Otherwise, if you do a lot of AJAX calls, and you keep, on every AJAX call, you keep the, the, the connection open to the database, and you open a new one, and you keep it open, and then you open another one, and you keep it open, you're going to run out of connections pretty quick.
Okay, so let's see if this works. So now I have this project. I'm going to have to change. This is the wrong one. So I'm going to have to change this to be my my home page, right? It's called sign in page. Notice that it looks like my home page, but now it has this employee ID and password in here. So now I log in as Mike Dover. One two three four five six seven eight. One two three four five password. Click on sign in. Didn't work. And no matter how many times you try it, it's not gonna work. One, two, three, four, five. So what do you do at this point? What would you guys do at this point? Yeah, right? Because it, it delay a little bit, you know, it's trying to log me in, but it comes back, no error message, the same form. What can we do? That's a really good question. Is it echoing the right stuff or not? How can we test that? How can we test what what what's being echoed? Okay, so you, what you're saying is go back to the code and in here do a print print of this or or a print of session, right? How about if we try the same stuff that JavaScript is trying but through the URL? What is the JavaScript trying? Can you guys remind me? This is what JavaScript is trying. Okay? Who is to say that I cannot just do it myself? I don't need Ajax. Okay? I'm going to do it myself. One, two, three, four, five is my password. And my username is one, two, three, dash, four, five, dash, six, seven, eight, nine. This is exactly what my Ajax is doing. Let's hit it. See what we get. What echo do we get back? Yes. Isn't that cool? I don't know what happened there, but on on Yes, you're right. Line 31. So on Ajax logging, line 31 doesn't know what this is. Of course. Because I call it E, not U. But I'm not going to fix it for now. Look at this. Inside WAMP you can actually configure your Apache, your MySQL, and your PHP. And in fact, one of the PHP settings that you can check is called Display Errors, which right now is unchecked on my end. But if I say Display Errors, 
No, that's something that got installed automatically when I installed WAMP. That's my server. So all I do is I start that thing. And that thing is the WAP the WAMP manager executable under WAMP. And that runs the whole thing. Runs the MySQL service, the Apache service, and it allows me to change configurations. And and and, and I could have done the same thing if I go to the folder, open the text file, and type instead of true, I try type false or whatever, and then it's the same thing as checking or unchecking this stuff. It's the same thing. But it's very convenient if you can do it this way. Because if you check on display errors, this stuff will show up on the Ajax call. As opposed to nothing. You're like, now what? what? <laughs> Did it do it? Did it do it? Didn't do it? What happened? Right? Okay. So apparently I have undefined variable u, and that's correct because I don't have a u. My u got validated into a dollar sign e, and I don't like that. So I'm going to change all my dollar sign e's for dollar sign u's. Now I have usernames and passwords. Got it? Let's hit it again. Now what I got back? The email address and the password enter do not match those on file. Oh. I think you are into something now. Yes. Okay, let me see if I understand your question. How come in the Ajax call that error message I was showing before was not showing? Right. Okay, that's a very good question. And this is going back to this setting. When you say PHP, I don't want you to display any errors. I want you to be quiet. Okay? If I get back when I'm supposed to get back, fine. If I don't, I don't want to hear anything about undefined variables or whatever. That's what the display errors is telling you. That's what you are telling PHP. If you say display errors, whatever error that you see on your page, you're going to get back as result. If display errors is not checked, PHP is going to be quiet. So, development as a development, I suggest. In fact, I'm going to be turning on display errors when I grade your stuff. And I don't want to be seeing undefined dollar sign E's and U's and this, that, or the other. Okay? Because that means you are not. You're not using the correct variables, or you're trying to use variables that were never defined. And that's a big no-no. Okay, so when I hit this page with these parameters, and there's, a dis and there's an error, the PHP page will just totally halt execution and throw the error message. Yes, even if I have it turned off. But if I do an Ajax call, okay, and I'm in this page, and I do an Ajax call, it's not going to come back with that error. It's going to halt the execution, and it never came back. Do you remember on ready stage? So that's why it's very clever especially when you have a lot of Ajax calls. In this case, we're going to have only one. In fact, some of you will have two. 
if you have ratings, star ratings 1 through 5, that star rating is a JavaScript. It's a widget that when you hover over, it will highlight as how many stars you want. And when, when you click, that click is the equivalent of the login. It will execute some JavaScript Ajax that will make a call to the server that will say, hey, server, somebody just said that this movie should be rated 4.5. Save it in the database. And the PHP says, okay, fine, I did it. Return back, okay, true, whatever. And then you turn back, and that's another Ajax call that you guys are going to be doing, the rating. So logging and rating are the only two Ajax calls that you guys are going to be doing. Okay, so so when you have a lot of Ajax calls, it's very clever to just try the call, the Ajax call first to see what you get back. Only when you have that code that handles the Ajax reply or response, when that code is ready and working, then try the Ajax call way. Otherwise, you're going to have a headache trying to figure out what the heck is wrong with your with your Ajax calls. So what happened here? Tim, you were saying? But hold on a second. This get p will put in here what? One, two, three, four, five. And then I show it. And that's how I compare my password. So that's fine. Okay, so maybe this is not one, two, three, four, five. What do you guys think? How can we test this? How about if we test it the old way? You guys remember the old way? What is the old way? The one that we did last week. Come on, guys. this way. If I try 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, whatever, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, I get back my timesheet list. Hmm. How come I'm not getting my timesheet list? on this one. That's what I did, look. Comes back that the email address and password entered do not match those on file. Where does it say that? You guys remember? Right here. That's in the else. Else of what? <sighs> what happened here? Okay, so I'm going to do a select star from... I'm going to do the query. Okay? At this point, I have to do the query. I'm like, I'm going nuts. Why isn't this working? I'm going to try my query. So instead of dollar sign $u, I'm going to try what? And the password?
Do we have the right one? This is the else with all the form, and this is the end of the else. At this point, the only thing we can do is what is it we can do? Debugging, guys. When remember when you have no clue whatsoever and you have to run step by step your code until you figure out what the heck is wrong with it debugging is your best friend debugging is your best friend so let's debug it My free, my SQL I free result will just get rid of the entire memory that the result set occupied. Okay, so let me try one more thing before I debug. Keep this in mind. Everything that you pass in the URL, absolutely every value, no matter if it's a date, a number, uh, dollars, uh, a dollar amount, whatever, it's going to be a string. Always will be a string. Okay? Okay, but nobody answered my question. How do you debug this stuff? All right. So, what would you debug then? The AJAX login, right? Debug page. AJAX login. Debug PHP web page. This is the URL. And now, notice that at the first line, auto generate that. Uh, oh, there you go. It picked the Zen debugger by default. Ah, it should be the X debug. Ah, okay. So you applied your debug. Yes, finally. All right. So here we are debugging it. What's going to happen? Let's try this again. I'm going to try it with the double quotes. We already know that that is the problem, right? Wrong URL. So here I am. Okay? So 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 how did I this is very important, guys, because if you guys don't know how to debug your stuff, you're gonna go, you're gonna have a lot of frustration, a lot of time frustrating. And you don't know why it's why it's wrong. What you have to do is, you have to create. Let's say that you want to debug the registration. Then you create your go to debug and create a debug configuration, and make sure that it's debug that is the right uh, PHP, whatever, registration, break at the first line and all that stuff. It will start the Eclipse browser. And the Eclipse browser will have this funny looking whatever, right? And if you don't want to debug it from the Eclipse from the Eclipse Eclipse browser. What you do is you copy that funny stuff, the key and the Eclipse session start and all that stuff. You copy it into your browser, add your own parameters because remember we're hitting the page, our page with parameters. So make sure that you put all those parameters, and when you hit it, 
it will know that it has to go to this page and stop there, there in the first, uh, okay, in the first statement. And now we can start debugging it. So we're going to require the configuration, the MySQL connection. There you go. Here it is. What's under dollar sign get you? So we go into our get, and it says, oh, I have four elements. Let me see what's you. U is double code one two three four. So it's going to literally take the double code as part of the value of the. So so that's not what we want. Obviously, that's when we figure out. Oh, that's not exactly what we want, right? Because U becomes this. Bless you. And then same thing with the password. Look what the password becomes. Double code one two three four five. Okay, so now we're ready to do the query. And when we do the query, what's R on my SQL result? Nothing. Nothing. The query didn't work. The query didn't work. Okay, so at this point, you're going to say, wait a minute, let me, let me see the query. What, remember, query is on the dollar sign Q. You can actually copy the entire query and try to run it in here. And it will tell you, there's no records, there's no records. You're trying this query. There's no records that match this query. Why? Because I'm trying this double quote here. That is not supposed to be there. So anyway, at this point we figure out, right? We figure out what's wrong. You guys know how to debug the whole thing. Okay? The debugging session. Yes, very good. Finally, somebody's paying attention. This guy is calling it a name, but not the ID. And what are we doing? We're telling JavaScript to grab an element by its ID. So it's fine to call it username and password. It's fine. But it has to be its ID because JavaScript will try to get that element by that ID and grab its value. And then it passes as a parameter to you. Right? So now we're going to try it again. not working yet and the problem is it's passing username so if we change it to U and P and try it on our own like this see it's trying to post onto sign in PHP and that's wrong that is wrong Yes, exactly. So the problem is this code that you have in Ajax login, you also have it in signing page. What do we have to do with that code? Get rid of it. Thank you. Get rid of th this entire code. So almost the signing page becomes what it was back then when it was just HTML. Notice that there's no PHP code whatsoever. So now let's try it again. Home. 
login I must have deleted something that I shouldn't have deleted <laughs> see that validation error uh, what is it uh, print errors now I can't forget the name of the display errors if display errors was unchecked you will get back a blank page and you will be like what on earth so signing PHP has a problem on line 57 and indeed look at this sorry forgot to delete that okay there you go sign in in fact it should be under the menus right so this div this is the entire div that will get replaced oh I'm sorry Nope, 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 nope. That's not right. This is the entire diff that will get replaced. It's called login Ajax. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find in my Ajax, I'm trying to find a login diff, not an Ajax. Login Ajax diff. Okay, so I'm going to grab that login Ajax, which is where? Which is in the menu, this entire div, and I'm going to either replace it with the welcome or replace it with an error message and then the form. Wait a minute. Do we really need a form at all? What do you guys think? Do we really need a form? At this point we have input tags, right? And when we click there is the problem. Right there is the problem. Do you know who is screwing us up? When you have a form and you have an input tag of type submit, it will try to submit onto itself. When you do not say anything whatsoever, you do not say in action, you do not say the type of, what is it, uh, submission, post. When you don't say the post, it will default to the get. When you don't say the action, it will defa default unto itself. So what happened here? When you were actually clicking on the submit button, you were actually doing a form unto it, a post unto itself. So we did the Ajax, we came back and we displayed and then submit the whole thing all over again. Not good, isn't it? So the input tag of type submit, don't make it submit. Okay? Just make it a button. Yeah, uh -huh. that's what I thought. Just make it a button, but not a submit button. So now we try one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Sign in. Yes, finally, finally. 
logged in as Mike Dover. You can change the password. You can log out. It's not pretty. I know that. But it's the it's the HTML that comes back. You can always format that. You can you can try to make it uh, l go with your styles, right? So it's nice and graceful and doesn't look this ugly. But at this point, you're on the same page that you started, and now you're log in. Does that mean that I can actually go to take a look at Mike Dover's timesheets? What do you guys think? Indeed. How about if we do a real test? Let's log in as somebody else. And that somebody else is Teresa Walker. And this is her social. Also, one, two, three, four, five. Now I am Teresa Walker. And if I go to unpaid timesheets, I should only see her timesheets. Because login took care of everything else, which was put the user in the session, and everything will fall through right in the right place. Aha. Uh -huh. Very good. Very good question. How come my div is showing? Can anybody tell me why? If I'm already logged in, why is this guy showing? Timesheet list. PHP. Let's take a look at it. Timesheet lit has my header and my menus. Why my menus, if it has my menus, why is it showing this stuff? What am I missing here, guys? Ah, excellent, excellent. What is it? PHP. I'm sorry. PHP. If dollar sign underscore session what? If it's set, right? Session what? The, or any or the name or whatever. Yeah. In this case, in this case, what what did we put in the session when we log in? Can anybody tell me? Yeah, but what was the actual query? I think that's what I was asking for. So, I'm sorry. So, so if this is true, what do I have to do? I want to display this. I want it to display that. Otherwise. What do I want to display? <coughs> oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. If not, it's set. And this thing is not color coding for me. Why? Ah, because it's in HTML. You guys see that? <laughs> Okay, so if the session is not set, you are going to provide me a div called login Ajax with the form that would allow me to log in. If not, what are you going to provide me with? Yes, 
something very similar to a successful login, right? Which was this echo. This echo. So now when I go to and refresh timesheet list, <laughs> look at this. It says I'm logged in and provides also, sorry, forgot, duh. So this is inside the if, right? and this is inside the else. I know when you don't have color coded uh, it's kind of confusing but trust me. This div will be put inside the if statement otherwise all these echoes will be put inside the else. Now, this violates one of the things that I told you from the beginning when we started doing PHP. You guys remember? Uh, now we have an HTML page that has PHP code. <laughs> now, this HTML page, fortunately enough, is being included into a PHP page. That's why it will grab the file, it will put it as part of the code, and it will execute it. So that's fine. Okay. The only thing that it's not fine is that it looks really weird because it's not color coding it. It doesn't know what to do with that PHP stuff. Now, the other thing you can do is what? But don't make it HTML page. Make it a PHP page. And then what do you do on the other page then? The one that includes it. Re re require. Remember require? There's a difference between include and require, and I told you guys what it was. You do include of HTML pages. Require is when you actually want to include a PHP file. Tell me which one are we doing a require of? The MySQL connection, MySQL database connection is a require. So it's a PHP. It, it's a it's a file of PHP extension that has PHP code. In fact, that code is the one that allows us to connect to the database. So now, if I just refresh, it will show that I'm logged in as Teresa Walker. Log in and say no, you're logged in already, right? Because it checks the session. So now I can log out. Hey, we never tried this guy. John Smith. I think he has the same. Ah. How do you log out? Okay. Let's see what it has. Let's go to the header, not the header, the menu. Right? And what is this? It's an anchor. An anchor to what? To log out PHP. We already have that. What is log out PHP? It's a PHP that kills and destroys the session and takes you back to sign in. So everything falls right through. I'm going to close the window. So I'm going to log in as this person. One, two, three, four, five. Sign in. Now I'm John Smith. 
I want to verify that indeed this guy doesn't have timesheets. No timesheets. Now, kill the browser? Exactly. All right, let's kill the window. So what you're saying is close this tab. Gone. And now I'm going to try the same. Right? I'm going to kill the browser. The answer is <coughs> the web server, and this is something that is configurable in the Apache web server. The Apache web server will keep your session, I think it's by default like 20 minutes. After 20 minutes that it doesn't hear anything from you in regards to that session, it will just kill it. So here I am. Look at this. still works even though I killed the browser now what about if I kill this the cache, the cookies, everything what do you think? Well, think about it very good Because the cache doesn't know anything about a session anymore. So how is it going to say, hey server, I'm here, this is the session. It's gone. It's not in the cache. It's not in the cookies. See, there's two ways of storing the session. You can actually store it in, in the, in the uh, temporary files or whatever. You know, each browser has its own way of storing temporary files. Or you as a programmer can say, no, I'm going to save it in the cookie. But the problem with the cookie is some users do not allow cookies to be saved in their local computers for whatever reason, security, whatever. So if that means that if your users do not allow cookies, they will not be able to use your website. Okay. So now we know how to do AJAX login. We know how to debug. And this is exactly what it's due next week, guys. Next week, you guys have to turn in your login AJAX style. Okay? And that's only half of the homework. The other half is going to be the equivalent to forgot my password or to enter hours.